to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your holy word and we pray that you would speak to us as we think about it this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, will you imagine again this morning that I'm speaking as somebody else? You've heard the end of my story today. You won't appreciate it fully unless you know everything that happened to me. God had blessed me, Job, with a fine family, seven sons and three daughters. I had considerable property, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys and servants to look after them all. I was one of the greatest and most respected men in the East. I trusted God and was grateful for all God had given me. I always tried to live with integrity, to follow God's way and to keep from doing wrong. I used to pray for my family to do the same. One day, out of the blue, disaster struck. I couldn't believe it as messengers came to me one after another. All my oxen and donkeys, along with the servants who looked after them, were stolen. My sheep and shepherds were killed by lightning. <clears throat> my camels and their herders were slaughtered. And worst of all, my sons and daughters, who were all together, were killed in, when a violent wind caused the house to collapse on top of them. I was devastated. I'd lost everything in a single day. You may not believe my response, but it was genuine. All I could do was to trust the God who'd given me everything in the first place. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there, I said. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But soon after that, I developed terrible sores all over my body, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. You can imagine the pain I was in. I was in such agony that my wife told me I should just curse God and die. But I said, shall we receive good at the hand of God? and not receive the bad. But I can tell you, I was in a really bad way. I couldn't understand why all this had happened to me. I went into deep mourning. Imagine how I looked, stricken by grief and by illness. Three of my friends, hearing about my troubles, came together to comfort me. Eliphaz, Bildad and Zophar, three good friends. They didn't recognise me when they saw me. I'd changed so much. They wept aloud and they went into mourning with me. They sat with me in silence for seven days, seeing how much I was suffering. Then I burst forth with words that shocked them. I was in such a state of despair that all I wanted to do was to die. I cursed the day of my birth. I wished I'd never been born. On and on I went with words spilling out. You have to read them to appreciate how desperate I felt. Maybe they were a bit extreme, but I was in terrible pain and despair. Immediately, Eliphaz rebuked me for my intemperate words, claiming I had no patience. What I needed to do was to trust God and turn back to God. But actually, I did already trust God. I was just in so much distress. 
I wished Eliphaz had understood that I was just giving vent to the pain I was feeling. Then he pontificated that the innocent never suffer. People reap what they sow. I must have done something wrong to be suffering as I was. He said, God must be punishing me. Because only those who are wicked have such things happen to them. You can imagine how I felt with his allegation that my sins had caused my suffering. I'd hope my friends would be kind to me to not make things worse. All I was doing was venting my pain. I wondered what offences he thought I'd committed. I cried out to the Lord in my distress. Maybe the Lord could cope with my rantings. Listen to some of the things I told the Lord as I poured out my soul. I'm allotted months of emptiness and nights of misery are apportioned to me. My flesh is clothed with worms and dirt. My skin hardens, then breaks out again. When I say my bed will comfort me, my couch will ease my complaint, then you scare me with dreams and terrify me with visions so that I would choose strangling and death rather than this body. Why have you made me your target? Why have I become a burden to you? Hearing my outpourings to God, my second friend, Bildad, rebuked me strongly. God is always just, he said. God always does what is right. He told me I should seek God. Hadn't I been doing just that? If I changed my ways, he said, then God would restore me. There must be a reason for my suffering, he said. Evil people always meet calamity and good people always flourish. Well, yes, but that's not always true, is it? And certainly in my case, it wasn't. I was totally committed to the Lord, living God's way, yet calamity had overtaken me. I couldn't understand what God was doing with me. I wanted to speak with God about the injustice of my lot. But how could I approach him? How could I lay my case before him? God does what he wills and who can stop him? I wanted to say, don't condemn me. Tell me why you are against me. Why do this to me? when there are plenty of wicked people in the world to deal with. But in my distress, I kept talking to God. I reminded God of the way he'd blessed me and guided me from my mother's arms. Yet now he was trying to destroy me. God had turned cruel to me. Well, then my third friend, Zophar, stepped in to silence what he called my stupid ravings. Put away your sin, he said, then all will be well again. Well, I'd had enough of my friend's wisdom when it simply didn't apply to me. I was a laughing stock to my friends and my family. It was all too much. I knew as well as they did that you reap what you sow. But that's not what was happening with me. I wanted to speak directly with God, to argue my case with God. My friends were no help at all. Worthless physicians, I called them in my frustration. Miserable comforters. It made no difference. They kept bringing up the same old arguments, condemning me, saying that I deserved my suffering, even making up for me sins that I'd never even thought of. In fact, I'd done quite the opposite to what they accused me of. For example, I'd never turned away from people in need. I'd never been dishonest in business or unfaithful to my wife. You really need to read the long dialogue between me and my friends. It's quite painful and disturbing. 
Oh, I forgot to mention another friend, a young friend, Elihu, turned up with the same arguments, but added that my suffering was designed to teach me something. But I had nothing to say to him. God was the one I really wanted to speak with. I couldn't understand what God was doing. I said things like this. I would speak to the Almighty and I desire to argue my case with God. I am innocent. Only grant me two things, then I will not hide myself from your face. Withdraw your hand from me and do not let dread of you terrify me. Then call and I will answer. Or let me speak and you reply to me. What I wanted was an audience with God, to argue with God about my situation, like you might in a courtroom. I'd done nothing wrong. I didn't deserve this suffering. God wasn't being fair. This is what I said. Today also my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy, despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his dwelling. I would lay my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would learn what he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Oh, that I had one to hear me. Here is my signature. Let the Almighty answer me. Oh, that I had the indictment written by my adversary. Surely I would carry it on my shoulder. I would bind it on me like a crown. I would give him an account of all my steps. Like a prince, I would approach him. Bold words, you'll agree. Would God let me defend myself? Would God answer me? Well, yes, God did answer me but with much more than I'd bargained for. It was like being caught up in a whirlwind. I thought I'd be questioning God, but God as much said to me, who are you to question my wisdom when you know so little? Now get ready to answer the questions I have for you. Well, dozens of unanswerable questions all about God's wonderful creation. God was basically asking me if I had the wisdom and knowledge to create and run the world. Tell me, he said, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place? Have you entered the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that a flood of waters may cover you? Can you hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions? Do you know when the the mountain goats give birth? Do you observe the carving of the deer? Is the wild ox willing to serve you? Will it spend the night at your crib? Do you give the horse its might? Do you clothe its neck with a mane? Is it at your command that the eagle mounts up and makes its nest on high? So many amazing questions. You really must read them all, showing me the beauty and order of God's creation and my limited understanding. God questioned me about my knowledge and ability to control the world. God showed me his handiwork from the vastness of space to the birds and animals. It was as though God was taking me by the hand like a father with a child who thinks he knows everything, showing me the vastness and beauty and intricacy of creation. 
everything done with infinite wisdom and care. It made me realise that God's work in the world is so much bigger than I could ever imagine. I'm not the centre of the universe. The world doesn't revolve around me. I've been the one questioning God and wanting an answer. Now, God wanted an answer from me. Shall a fault finder contend with the Almighty, God said? Anyone who argues with God must respond. What could I say? See, I am of small account. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand on my mouth. I had nothing more to say. All my questions about God's justice vanished. I have spoken once and I will not answer. Twice, but will proceed no further. But that wasn't the end. God had more questions for me. Will you even put me in the wrong? Will you condemn me that you may be justified? Have you an arm like God? Can you thunder with a voice like his? Pour out the overflowings of your anger and look on all who are proud and abase them. Look on all who are proud and bring them low. Tread down the wicked where they stand. Yes, I'd been concerned about the justice of what God was doing. I wanted to have things set right. But of course, I couldn't right all the wrongs of the world. Who was I to teach God his business? I am not God. Then God asked me to look at those two dangerous creatures with some wonderful descriptions of them. Something like a hippopotamus, he said. Look at behemoth, which I made just as I made you. It eats grass like an ox. Only its maker can approach it with the sword. And Leviathan, a large frightening sea creature. Can you draw out Leviathan with a fish hook or press down its tongue with a cord? Who can confront it and be safe under the whole heaven? Who? Of course we humans cannot control them. But God can put them on a leash as he wishes. There are things we cannot control, but God can and does. God can set limits to things that threaten us. Well, what a whirlwind of a tour around God's amazing world. Do you see how God changed the subject completely? I'd been concerned about the injustice of my suffering. My friends believed that God was justly punishing me for my sins. But God said nothing about this at all. God was enlarging my horizon. In inviting me to explore the majesty, beauty and exuberance of the creation, I was reassured that its maker, my maker, is unimaginably, unimaginably wise and of infinite resource. No longer did I need an answer to the why of suffering, nor did God give me one. It was enough to know that God was somehow exercising his wisdom and care in my life as in the life of the world. My response was unequivocal. Unequivocal. I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge, said God? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me which I did not know. I had been speaking in ignorance. My knowledge and understanding is very limited. God, infinitely wise, knows what he is doing and does everything well. I no longer needed to prove that God was treating me unfairly. 
God had said, hear and I will speak. I will question you and you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes seize you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Do you know what? I learned more about God through this whole experience. I came to know God with a reality I'd never experienced before. It was like seeing rather than just hearing. How amazing that God should speak to me like this. I felt ashamed that I'd questioned the way God runs the world, accused God of not doing what's right. God can do what God wishes to do and God can carry out any plans he makes. All I could do was repent of my arrogance. We humans are but dust and ashes, mortals, not God. I don't have all the answers to suffering, but I'll trust God's loving wisdom and goodness. I know that God is trustworthy so I can live in trust and submission to God even when I don't know why bad things happen to me. Would you believe what the Lord then said to my friends? My wrath is kindled against you for you have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job has. No, I haven't done that, sorry. Wow. All their arguments and pontification to justify what God was doing was completely wrong. But my words, pouring out my heart honestly to God, my doubts, my fears and pain, was right. I guess that's why there are so many prayers of uh, lament in our scriptures giving us permission to pray and prayers to use when we're really desperate. Did you notice that God called me my servant, Job? Three times, in fact. God wanted me, his servant, to pray for God's mercy on my friends. Still a mess of painful sores, God honoured me by using me to pray for my friends and to help them. It seems I'd passed some kind of test. You know more about the prelude to my suffering than I did at the time. Behind it was the malevolent intent of the Satan, the accuser, always bent on evil and destruction. The Satan believed that no one would remain faithful to God in the face of terrible suffering. But the Satan was completely wrong his plans were defeated. The more I was in pain, the more I held on to my grip on God. Or maybe it was God holding on to me. I trusted God, even though I couldn't understand what God was doing. Eventually, God healed me. God blessed me with even more than before, double the livestock and servants. I lived a long life on earth, welcoming the grandchildren of seven sons and three daughters. My daughters were as important to me as my sons, so I gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. As you can imagine, there was still the pain of the loss of my first children. But all my tears were wiped away when I finally met the Lord face to face and was embraced in his love. Then all I could do was worship. But you know more about that too than I did then. How God himself, in the person of his son, came to wipe all tears away. God in Jesus exposed himself to all the suffering that is in the world. Jesus faced a terrible death to rid the world of evil, sin, suffering and death, indeed the Satan himself, to bring healing and forgiveness to all who trust him. Jesus' resurrection from the dead ushered in the new creation, which will be completed when Jesus returns, when the dead are raised. I'll be there too. 
when heaven comes to earth. You have that wonderful vision in your scriptures. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. I imagine that you, like I did, face many things in life that you don't understand, not least personal suffering and tragedy. I hope you too can learn to trust God's goodness and call out to him in your need. We do not have all the answers to suffering, but we can trust God's loving wisdom and goodness in the face of suffering. Thank you for listening to my story. Let's pray.